My name is Alex Wells and I'm Head of Education and Quality at the National Union of Students. And I've been asked to give a student perspective on the use of technology in the 21st century. And I suppose I just wanted to, to start by reflecting on some of my own experiences. I went to university to study history uh, for my undergraduate degree back in the mid-1990s. And even then, I remember sort of writing, ha sort of handwriting most of my essays, not using the internet at all, and actually barely knowing what email was, let alone using it to communicate with my tutor. And then comparing that to sort of that relatively sort of technologically stone age experience to my current experience as a part-time student uh, doing a master's at the Institute of Education only 15 years later. I'm now able to download my weekly readings and other journals from my, uh, from my VLE at home, have online discussions with my classmates, and even watch lectures from other universities on YouTube. ICT is now an integral part of the daily lives of most people. The percentage of UK householders with access to ICT is currently around 73%, having risen from 51% only three years ago. The NUS HSBC Student Experience Report shows that 96% of students use the internet as a source of information, 69% on a daily basis as part of their studies. I suppose if my own experience tells me anything about the pace of change within technology, it's certainly no use uh, trying to predict how technology will be used throughout the, uh, the next century, let alone the next five years. But I just wanted to reflect on what students are currently thinking about it and provide some thoughts on how we can use tech, how the use of technology could be better integrated. My talk is going to be based uh, on the data from the annual a NUS HSBC student experience report. And I'll primarily be using data from last year's report, although I will sort of give you a, a sneak preview of some of the key findings from this year's report, which we'll be releasing in November. In addition to the student experience report, NUS was commissioned earlier this year by Hefke to undertake some research into student perspectives on technology as part of their high-level online learning task force that uh, Aaron Porter is uh, a member of and, uh, as Seb mentioned, unfortunately, he can't be here today. But I'll use this research to add some flavour to some of the data and to highlight some of the key recommendations coming from that research and include a number of focus group surveys of both current and also prospective students. And so it provides an interesting overview uh, and this will also be released in the next couple of weeks. However, I suppose the first point that I wanted to make that the research emphasised is that ICT provision varies massively between institutions and therefore there's such a wide variation of the individual experiences of students. And so whilst I hope what I say will resonate with most of you, it probably won't be true of every student and every institution. My talk's going to be based around uh, uh, three main areas. What students think about current ICT usage in higher education, what stu how students would like to see it used, and thirdly, the, the training needs of students, but also of academics. And hopefully I'll leave some, end, uh, some time at the end for any questions that you may have. So firstly, looking at what students think of ICT usage in higher education. As part of the hefty funded research that we did, uh, we did a survey of prospective students. And what was perhaps most interesting was sort of this underlying theme that the relationships between students and ICT was often quite conservative, I suppose, and ambiguous. Obviously, there was a certain amount of uh, students who are very innovative, but there is a sort of underlying theme there. Almost 30% of students say that they preferred to have printed resources compared to uh, a quarter saying that they preferred electronic, 45% saying that they prefer both equally. And I suppose perhaps rightly, given the rigour of peer review, 40% say that they're more willing to trust printed materials rather than 15% uh, who say they're more likely to trust online information. But I suppose one of the, the key areas within institutions relating to ICT usage is obviously the virtual learning environment. So again, this reiterates the point of variability of student experiences with differences between institutions about how they use it, but also more significantly the differences between and even within departments. So whilst there was an expectation that uh, the ICT wouldn't instantly replace either the lecture or sort of more formal forms of learning. There was a quite widely held view that the VLE is underused. 
and more often than not, it's just a storage point for lecture notes rather than being actively using all the interactive features such as the chat rooms and so on. In terms of the, some of the wider discussions, I suppose particularly raised by the, uh, the previous government, it's interesting to note that 41% of students strongly disagreed that the university had a right to monitor their internet usage. But actually almost, or just over a third of them, said that the institution did have a right to, to see what students were actually looking at on the internet. The NUS HSBC Student Experience Report gives a broad overview of what students think about ICT usage, with 46% of students feeling that it has enhanced their studies, although 34% neither agreeing or disagreeing, and also 38% of students believing that ICT more generally has enhanced their time at university, again with a, a third neither agreeing or disagreeing. So that's sort of just a, a quick overview of some of the uh, perceptions that students currently have. But the second area I wanted to look at in a bit more detail was the way in which students would like to see ICT used within higher education. ICT is already highly integrated into the whole experience from the online searches for information by prospective students, online application forms through, USA, from, through UCAS, putting prospective students in contact through Facebook, the, the near universal use of email from everything to contacting your tutor and finding out about changes of uh, lecture schedules to being reminded about the access to financial support and the university careers service. Universities have invested heavily in ICT support, uh, whether through internet point, uh, access points in halls of residence uh, or indeed, as we've seen in the Times Higher this morning, increasing numbers of institutions with 24-hour access to computer suites. But using ICT for administration is certainly an area that students would like to see continually developed and expanded, recognising that the use of ICT can lead to both greater efficiency and making it more convenient for students. The upcoming NUS Charter on Feedback and Assessment calls for students to be able to submit assessments electronically. Now, of course, this won't be possible in every case. You can't submit a work of art or a, uh, sort of various uh, other sort of uh, more practical uh, forms of assessment. But this increased uh, flexibility will obviously support part-time and distance learners, but also will ultimately benefit all students. The Charter also calls for greater innovation in assessment. So... How can, in, how can technology be more used in the various different forms of assessment that there are? It's anachronistic that students are still expected to go into, uh, a, uh, go into an exam and handwrite their, uh, their answers in, in many cases. Uh, probably the only time that they'll actually have to handwrite anything is uh, in uh, university exams. The other area, I suppose, in terms of technology is the feedback that students get Feedback has been one of the, the key issues coming out of the National Student Survey and one of the ways in which both the uh, speed, of, uh, speed of feedback but also a way in which it can engage more students is providing that uh, through electronic means. There are a number of uh, projects looking at how that can be done more effectively. However, whilst ICT has been very well integrated into the administration of universities, there has been some suggestion that in terms of teaching and learning and sort of the application of ICT still has quite a long way to go. In many ways, it sort of currently replicates existing practice. So has a student that's used Google rather than the university library got any new information or have they just accessed it through a different medium? Similarly, has a group of students discussing an issue via an online discussion forum develop their learning beyond a tutorial discussion. The use of ICT has the potential to truly enhance teaching and learning, but I think we're still a long way from this being realized within higher education. Certainly the constructivist approach to learning highlighted by Vygotsky, uh, by Vygotsky and others placed a greater emphasis on learning as an active process and emphasizing the importance of learning through doing. And actually I think this is where technology has a real opportunity being able to take advantage of some of the more interactive features of Web 2.0. I suppose perhaps it is unsurprising that we haven't developed this area as much as we could, given that, I suppose, wide access to personal computers have only really been available for a quarter of a century or so. 
World Wide Web only really for the last 15 years and Web 2.0 and social networking for about five years or so. So the rate of technology is so rapid that universities haven't, in many cases, been able to take best advantage of this. But there are beginning to, uh, we're beginning to see some quite interesting examples of that. So things like Anatomize, which allows medical students to, uh, the opportunity to, to practice dissecting cadavers uh, from the comfort of their own computers and learning through trial and error. But also using gaming technology has, has yet to be effectively explored. Certainly at NUS, we would encourage institutions to appoint something like a senior fellow uh, within university faculties to be responsible for new technologies and supporting integrate, integrating it into teaching and learning. And by having a champion within each faculty, this would hopefully result in a very real step change in the way in which technology and teaching and learning are integrated. But I suppose it's also important to consider that the impact that ICT usage will have on students before they arrive at university. There's already talk about students sort of skimming for information, looking at information in a more cursory and less detailed way rather than the traditional deep learning approach of immersing yourself in a subject. But also young people growing up with computers use quite a different approach to learning. They use sort of trial and error. So if you're playing a computer game, you keep on at that level in the, in the game until you succeed rather than uh, sort of the, the previous approaches. And so that has the potential to change the way in which people are learning. I just wanted very briefly to show you a short clip uh, from American Professor which emphasizes this point. The purpose of schooling is to take present-oriented little beasts and make them more future-oriented, and some cultures make them more past-oriented. In America, a child drops out of school every nine seconds. This is worse for, for kids from a minority background. Didn't like that. <laughs> Alex, what's the starting time for this? Time? It is uh, 5.30. hear it in the background, but I don't know what it is. Ah, oh, well, never mind. I think you better skip it. Yeah. Essentially, what the clip would have shown was the, the way in which, I think it's uh, by the age of 21, uh, young men have uh, been playing uh, on computer games and on the internet for 10,000 hours. And the impact that that has in terms of almost sort of rewiring their brain. And so I suppose the impact that that has is just sort of re-emphasizing the point that, that universities will need to consider the impact that that will have on the way in which people are learning. I suppose one way in which learning can become more interactive uh, is through using the technology that students already have in their pockets, so things like mobile phones and, and PDAs. More than a third of students, 37% of students, think that mobile phones and PDAs should be used in their learning. And there are actually a number of uh, projects, uh, particularly funded by the HE Academy, uh, that look into this. I think there's uh, one at the University of Bradford uh, on mobile enhanced uh, disabled students, MEDS, uh, which is looking at how mobile technology can be used to support learning. And I think this has probably been a theme of your discussions over the last couple of days. But I suppose there was also a, a certain resistance among students for there to be more teaching delivered online, with three quarters of students disagreeing uh, that they would like to see this. In terms of the way in which it is delivered, if it is going to be delivered online, there was a, certainly a preference for sort of the podcast rather than the video cast, as they're able to then listen to it wherever they want, but particularly useful in terms of uh, as an aid during revision. But I suppose the key with that is whether ICT can, be, can ever really be sort of a supplement to the teaching methods uh, that sort of the, the preeminence, I suppose, of the face-to-face -face teaching, the magic being woven by teachers with little more than a voice, enthusiasm and energy as, uh, has, has been described. 
But the main point is, for students, it can actually be both more enjoyable, more engaging, and especially the increasing use of technology in the school sector. It will both become more expected uh, as they go into higher education, but also with employers themselves demanding these skills, there will be an expectation that higher education meets these needs. So this moves us on to uh, the training needs of students. And I suppose there are three key areas that I wanted to touch upon, that sort of the basic computer skills for using sort of some of the major packages, things like Word, Excel, PowerPoint. Secondly, the skills that students need to make the most of new technologies, such as how to use the web for research, uh, as well as referencing and citing online materials. And finally, the more advanced technological uh, technology training for those doing more specialized courses. In reality, this last group is probably the easiest uh, group of students to support because the skills and equipment they are using are much more advanced and, and new to most students. And so they recognize the importance of uh, receiving training in that and also the institutions likely to provide it already. But the provision of training for basic skills is an interesting area, with many believing that these should already have been learnt within school. This training at university was considered by some in the research to be either a bit patronising or too basic, but there was also a perception that students themselves just won't bother to attend because they believe that they already have the skills. As one student uh, responded to the survey, I think 99% of students my age know how to use a computer very well indeed, therefore I think there's no need for any teaching for students on computers. But I suppose one of the interesting but perhaps unsurprising results of the, of the research was that most students, 81%, say that their ICT skills are self-taught. And I suppose this means that students both think that they already have the skills, but more importantly, they don't know what they don't know. Perhaps that's why 60% of students are satisfied with the ICT training, sort of, I suppose, happy in their almost Rumsfeldian unknown unknowns. But for example, I use words all the time and continually finding new features for it. And so without proper training at a more advanced and more tailored level, I'll never be able to make the most of this software. And one of the things that we're recommending in the report is that institutions do more to help students make them aware of their training needs. And perhaps even something as simple as a pre-arrival online test that can provide students with an accurate gauge of their skill levels and therefore the possibility of, of tailoring training sessions more particularly to the individual needs of students. Regarding the area of skills relating to new technologies, this is an area where students themselves would like additional training. Students want additional support, whether it's something as, as basic as how to cite from web sources to how to research using the web, but also how to identify useful and reliable material. This final point came up a number of times with students wanting to know what material to trust. And even something like Google Scholar, which provides the number of citations for particular articles, it can be sort of a useful guide. As one comment left by a student said, just more tips and advice on how to use the internet more effectively to find out what you need. Because I, for example, often spend a huge amount of time scanning through material I don't need until I get to the, uh, to, uh, the useful and required information. Students also need more support for researching and referencing we're seeing increasing numbers of students being caught out for academic misconduct. And I suppose one of the more worrying statistics in the research showed that 28% of students admitted to knowing other students that have used the web to plagiarize. Uh, and whether this, is through honest, uh, whether this is through intent or an honest mistake is unclear. It's also uncertain as to whether technology tools like sort of cut and paste have made pl plagiarism more prevalent or whether actually just software such as Turnitin has made it detection easier. We certainly believe that it's important to use tools like Turnitin as a way of improving awareness. And this should be used as a training tool with students able to, uh, to use the software on their essays, particularly on formative uh, assessment, to check their work beforehand and get the support if they do actually need it. Finally, I just wanted to touch on the uh, training needs of academics, which can be a particular delicate, particularly delicate issue. There are many academics in higher education that are at the forefront of integrating technology into teaching, but equally there are a significant number of academics that are more hesitant, is the way I should uh, probably put that. 
there has been much discussion around this nervousness amongst academics and them not feeling that they may have the sort of same level of skills as the web native students and uh, the teacher not wanting to put themselves in a situation where the knowledge gap can be identified. But the issue uh, of training came through the research quite strongly with a small but vocal undercurrent of dissatisfaction with comments such as teachers use PowerPoint far too much but don't really know how to use computers for anything else. And one student even saying, some tutors are, are very good with computer, uh, are not very good with computers, but I can usually help them. <laughs> this perhaps helps to explain the hesitancy amongst uh, students for greater use uh, of ICT in, in learning, with 50% disagreeing. But they can gain more when the tutor does in, uh, integrate it. But it's not about simply about shoehorning ICT usage into teaching learning, but how they can do it uh, well and in an appropriate way. In conclusion, then, information and communication technologies offer many exciting opportunities to support, develop, and even enrich teaching in higher education. People learn in, in multi-dimensional ways, and ICT is able to, to cater to all of these, but there is still massive potential that needs to be developed to ensure that we get the best out of ICT. However, it's only when these opportunities for greater interactivity and learning are unlocked that ICT will truly enhance learning. Universities are well placed with their culture of research, large budgets and access to technology, as well as their expertise in, com in their computing departments and so on, to push the boundaries of integration of ICT in pedagogy and assessment and to fully explore the possibilities of learning. But it's impor important to ensure that there are institutional approaches and strategies for ICT. However, it is essential that this also happens with teachers at the very centre of that process when developing teaching and learning pedagogies to ensure that what is developed is practical and implementable. Student expectations will continue to be the key driver for greater integration of ICT methods in higher education, particularly as students start to contribute uh, ever more of their own money in the cost of education, as well as uh, ICT through social networking and, and so on. So their expectations will rise. I suppose the, the very final point that I would like to add is that ICT should not be seen as a cost saver, but should be done for the many other benefits to institutions, such as added convenience, interactivity, ease of access. And I just wanted to end with a tweet that we got uh, as part of our uh, research that I think sort of sums up the approach to technology in higher education. ICT should create added value, not value for money. Thank you very much. Thanks very much, Alex. Um, there's been one question posed remotely, which I'll just ask straight away, which is, uh, and perhaps store the questions up and then answer them in a go, because we're going to need to clear the room in five. Um, just a bit about the sample size, whether or not postgraduates were included, and the spread of disciplines and subjects in the survey that you reported from. So if you store that. Uh, questions from the room. There's one at the back. Is that Colin Addy, I see? Uh, hi, Alex. Uh, Colin Addy, University of Wolverhampton. Um, can I ask uh, um, you to comment on a sort of strategic support issue? Um, you, you've talked um, uh, about um, uh, students and staff uh, needing more support, needing more training, um, and, I, and, I, and I'd agree with all that. Uh, you've talked about uh, wanting to see ICT uh, used more in... Um, more, what shall I call, I'll call it um, serious, um, <coughs> at a serious level, so for things like um, e-submission assessments, formal formative feedback and all that sort of thing, and I'd agree with all that wholeheartedly. Um, what we are probably struggling with, and I'd like your sort of thoughts on, is how we support that in the universities, and that's got to be built in strategically. So if I can give you sort of a, a very quick example, and unfortunately I don't have the figures to my head, I'll be very quick to get there. Um, uh, Seb, um, if you look at a library and the amount of staff that are in a library that support the academic, uh, the library side of the uh, of academia, and then compare that to the amount of staff you find in, let's say, a staff development unit or the amount of staff in e-learning or something, it's hu hugely disproportionate. Do we need to have a bit of a strategic realignment? 
Okay, do you want to come back on those two, Alex? And I'm, look I'm constantly looking for others who have, yeah, we, there'll be one over here. So just in terms of the, uh, the sample size, uh, so on, there, were, there were two pieces of research that I was quoting. The NUS HSBC Student Experience Report, which is uh, a piece of research funded by HSBC, which we, uh, GFK, conducts uh, on our behalf. Uh, there is a sample size this year of 3,800. Uh, it is uh, primarily, well, it is entirely undergraduate, but is uh, representative of the whole of the UK, of subjects, mix, uh, and so on. Uh, the second one was the NUS uh, research, uh, and this was a survey of prospective students, so people who are going to go to university, and this was uh, the thousand students uh, who are currently in FE, uh, and so it was a, a way of being able to sort of see the, what people about to go to university uh, are going to be increasingly expecting from their experience. In terms of the strategic support, then, absolutely, this is an area that needs to be developed. And I suppose particularly, we've heard all about the, the cuts that are going to be facing higher education and the way in which the sector is going to protect frontline teaching and learning. I suppose one of the, the key points from the student perspective is that often the interaction that they will have with the, whether it's departmental administrator, whether the person in the library, actually will have in many cases, as much an impact on their experience and will help them as many of the sort of people standing up in front of them. So this is certainly an area that does need to be uh, considered when we're going uh, forward with, uh, with these types of issues. But yes, there certainly does need to be a more strategic approach to the way in which it can be embedded. Thanks, Alex. Question here. Hi, my name's Abby Barker. I'm an e-resources librarian from the University Campus Suffolk. It kind of follows on from the, the previous question. Um, maybe more of a comment than a question. Everything that you mentioned helped with ICT, help with research, help with referencing. Hi, we're already here with the library. Yeah. Um, and when we are timetabled to see the students is over the next month. We see them in the first week for an hour of a three or a four year course and they forget that we're here. So maybe what the previous question was saying and that we realign things is that we then spend the next few years trying to get students through the door. We're here, we're willing to help. We would love to boost that 1% of students who use e-journals for their research. So the question might be, how do we get the academics, how do we get the students to point them in our direction? Thanks. Okay, shall I come back on that? Yeah. Come back on that. I suppose there, there are two points that I'd like to come back on that. I suppose the first one is, uh, the point I made around sort of how much students know what they need to know, in a sense, and so something that is able to assess what their needs are would be very useful, particularly in terms of uh, some of the issues around uh, particularly things like the, the, the regularly used packages, but also actually like uh, referencing. What I would say is actually that the student union itself is an under undertapped uh, resource in terms of supporting information out to students uh, around what courses are being provided. Certainly I know that York D Student Union did a lot of work last year to make students aware of the whole menu of uh, options uh, available to students and certainly that would be something I would encourage institutions to do is work very closely with their uh, student union to promote the opportunities available to students. Thanks Alex. Anybody else? Yep, we've got a question in the middle. A very simple question. Has the research on prospective students been published yet? Uh, not yet. Uh, it's going to be published, uh, Heather was here yesterday from Hefke, I think it's going to be published within the next week or so, uh, but sort of very soon. Anybody that's just on the edge of sticking their hand up is going to be tempted to by me. Yep. Sorry. Um, I was just going to ask, actually, use us perhaps. You suggested that the one that was easy was, in fact, the support. You gave three. Mm. Um, three areas of support for students. And you suggested the third, the, su the support for learning technologies, was, in fact, the easiest. Whereas my bells ring and say, that one's the hardest. Can we just do a straw poll and say, from the people in the room here, who is satisfied with the level of support um, for their students in relation to the learning technologies that they use? Now you just put up your hand if you're satisfied. 
That's three, four. What proportion is that then, sir? Uh, well, you need to say who's dissatisfied, I think, to get the kind of, because maybe a lot of people are sitting on their hands. So uh, nine or so in here, which will be about a, 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 a fifth of the audience. I think there's 45 or 50 in. But do you want to ask the counter question? Yes. So can we, can we have dissatisfied? How many? Yeah, so two to one. Two to uh, one. Two to one. In Interesting. Mm. Okay. I just wanted to find out. Thank you. Thank you. Any other last teeterers? Yep. It's amazing how if you say that, people <laughs> stick their hands. Hi, um, I'm a learning technologist, Marty Jacobs from um, University of Essex. Um, you talked about um, your use of Word, which um, I, I agree with and empathise with that. Um, how much time should we spend on the basic stuff like Word training for students and staff and PowerPoint? And how much time should we spend on cutting and bleeding edge te um, learning technology? That'll depend very much uh, department to department. So certainly for students for which essay writing is a core element, then anything that makes it easier. Uh, you hear about sort of third year students who unfortunately still haven't sort of worked out how to use cut and paste. <laughs> That's the exception rather than the rule, but there are still uh, particularly sort of essay-based subjects where student uh, knowledge of some, some basic packages could certainly be improved. Obviously, the more technical the subject itself, the more you'll then need to focus on the, the technology relevant to that discipline. Question over here. And that'll be the last one. Hi, Alex. I was very heartened when you said about the students not not knowing what they don't know, and you gave the example, you know, personal example of you still finding out mm. things about Word. Mm. And I think it's human nature. We just don't yeah. realise we don't know so much. So on your last ICT, should create added value, not value for money. How do you think that ICT can create this added value in finding out what the students don't know and working towards the ICT with the faculty in integrating that to add, do the added value side of things. Yeah, uh, I suppose it depends very much on the, the example I used was uh, as a student having studied two now uh, essay based subjects, it would be very useful to me to be able to use Word very effectively. So something where an online test where I'm able to just go through a series of questions which will then point out some of the areas that I don't know or wouldn't naturally use and then being able to have the training that can then pinpoint where I am at the moment, how I can then be sort of taken to the next level I suppose in, that, in, terms, of, uh, in terms of that example. I suppose it will depend very much on the individual student and their discipline as well. Okay, thanks Alex for that uh, presentation. Thanks audience for your questions. Thanks remote audience for participating and let's show our appreciation for Alex in the usual way. Thank you.